today it's my pleasure to announce uh, Mr. George P Pitsilis, the governor of the Independent uh, Authority of Public Revenues uh, since uh, 2016. Uh, Mr. Pitsilis is a fellow Greek American. He born uh, in New York, and uh, he's an accomplished attorney at law and uh, a researcher and experienced professional. He has graduated from the Athens uh, School of Law and he has obtained the uh, master uh, from the University of Paris 1, Pantheon Sorbonne. He served also as a president of Inter-European Organization of Tax Administration uh, for the terms 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021. Uh, the, authority, the independent authority of public revenues, we can call it uh, the Greek IRS, uh, during the last decade, uh, has transformed itself, providing high quality of tax services and uh, citizenship uh, to citizens and uh, to businesses. Uh, Mr. Pitsilis is here to ask, to be asked, and to update the uh, Greek diaspora on uh, tax and custom uh, duties, uh, reforms in uh, not custom customs procedures also in uh, Greece. Uh, first, uh, we will have a short, uh, brief uh, speech from Mr. Pitsilis, and then uh, I'll make him uh, three written questions that I, that I have from you, and then you, are, uh, you will have the opportunity to make your own question. Uh, Mr. Pitsilis. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, Olga and Nikos for Bornozis for the, for the invitation to this year's Capital Link Forum. It's uh, always a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I don't think I've missed one since 2016 that I'm, I have the honor of heading the uh, Greek uh, Tax and Customs Authority. So we're, we're a little more than IRS actually because we also have the, the customs part. Uh, very happy to be here among the heroes that want to hear about taxes at five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> taxes and customs in Greece. Uh, I was, indeed, I was born in the States. It was Missouri, not New York. It's another lo long story. Uh, we have some time to, opportunity to discuss about that. Um, and, and I'm very happy to be here because, um, you know, Capital Link is, it's at the end of the year, and we it has been an opportunity for us to sort of uh, come back to what we have accomplished during the year and what are our plans for the next year. And we've been, uh, you know, we've been having a good story to tell, I think, on how we have been developing uh, things with the with the tax administration. So um, the past two, I would say. 2020, 2021, 2022, we, have, we had a good uh, three years of intense digitalization in our revenue administration. Uh, to say here, by the way, that uh, we have one of the, the, the strongest digital teams in, in the Greek public sector. Uh, we have a team of 450 people that actually, uh, you know, design and uh, develop uh, digital uh, solutions for, uh, for taxpayers. And uh, it's a very challenging uh, project. You, you mentioned, you know, my, my, my CV as a lawyer, what I do has very little to do with law, actually. Uh, it's more about uh, process re-engineering and, you know, building into digital applications the rules of uh, taxation. So, uh, giving you a brief of what we have done in the past two years. First of all, we've completely changed the digital environment into which taxpayers can uh, uh, fulfill their obligations uh, with us. We have a new platform, we call it MyAve. Ave is uh, the acronym for the uh, tax administration in Greece. So MyAve there. Uh, we have developed a platform, where we, 
uh, with which taxpayers can submit their, their claims to us. More than three million uh, such claims have been filed since its beginning last September. We have uh, responded to more than 93% of these uh, claims already. So the front end of all services is now digital with us. Uh, we, are, we are very proud of our digital bookkeeping, a digital invoicing solution in Greece. We call it My Data. It's among the most uh, innovative in, in Europe. The concept is very simple. All invoices must be transmitted to the tax authority, the summary thereof, and we constitute the, the books of businesses through this information. Uh, more than 1 million businesses are registered. Uh, more than 1.5 billion invoices sent, B2B invoices. I think we're going to be reaching 1 trillion euro value since October 2020. By the end of the year, we're already at, one, at 920 million billion euros of value already. And along with that, a freeware that we have offered uh, businesses, we call it Timologio, which is invoice in Greek, and it allows businesses to issue their invoices digitally, send them to their clients, and at the same time make the relevant digital registration in their books. Um, one of the, uh, the parts of the tax administration that was not digitalized had to do with real estate transfer. Uh, it was one of the, the, the areas that was left behind and caused a lot of problems. And I'm afraid that many of our Greek uh, fellow citizens here, uh, fellow Greeks here, have faced problems with that. We have resolved that. It's a, it's a platform called My Property. 200,000 uh, tax returns regarding real estate transfer tax, donation tax, inheritance tax now are filed digitally. So we have practically um, r reduced to one working day the whole process with the tax office regarding the transfer of real estate. Um, and we are also the first public sector uh, body that has uh, developed a digital onboarding we call it my other life, so uh, you, you can get tax identification number and you can get your digital credentials for entering the public uh, services websites uh, via video conference. Um, so in a nutshell, many things have been digitalized du during these three years. And to that comes the Recovery and Resilience Fund that has been discussed today. We have a portion of 260 million euros of works for uh, introducing business intelligence, artificial intelligence, big data, um, digital solutions for fighting uh, smuggling and uh, uh, tax fraud. So through you know monitoring of trucks and containers entering uh, the Greek territory, the connection with of cash registers with POS machines, so that we have a you know a comprehensive continuous transaction control system. And I can tell you that what has been done already is, is bearing fruit. The, the, the minister Minister Staikur has mentioned mentioned it in the morning. Uh, commission's report on VAT gap was announced yesterday. Uh, Greece, for one more year, is, has been reducing its VAT gap. It started at th almost 30% in 2017, the year that the independent authority was created, and steadily has been, uh, it's been reducing. Uh, 25 point something, 2018, 23.4. Uh, 2019, 19.7 in 2020, and the projection for 2021 is 14%, which means that 
uh, you know, reduction more than 50% uh, in these years. And this is due also to the, uh, the increasing performance and efficiency of the tax administration and the continuous transaction control schemes that we have introduced uh, in Greece. Uh, efficiency also shows in public revenue, which, which, which is going to uh, exceed 5.5 billion euro, which is estimated is uh, more than 12% of, of what was the, the target for this year. And uh, of course, th this is for us an opportunity to also, you know, discuss issues that might concern the uh, the Greek community here and how to help them, uh, you know, uh, uh, f facilitate them with their uh, with their tax obligations here. I will yeah. stop here so that yeah. maybe stop we can here. have. Uh, yeah. Uh. I will make the first uh, question. It's uh, written. Uh, the, you have sent it to me. Foreign investors are always cautious about uh, investing in Greece uh, due to, to geopolitical uh, concerns and tough governmental navigation system. How can Greece, uh, how can, uh, Greece make its administrative process more efficient? Well, actually, it is through digitalization. If that's what we are working on, um, I think that, uh, I mean, we, we are proud in Greece in having become innovative in many areas. The uh, digital bookkeeping and invoicing system that I told you is among the most innovative ones. Uh, a few months ago, we hosted the, uh, the meeting of the heads of tax administrations of the European Union, and we presented the solution to our uh, to our colleagues there uh, there was a digital award uh, process uh, it was found to be the second most interesting one so Greece is is you know uh, is rapidly becoming very innovative in this area and we are actually working uh, every day in simplifying uh, procedures we have created taxpayer service, in order to see where we need to intervene. We have a new director for communication in order to uh, make tax information uh, easier to access to taxpayers and especially taxpayers abroad. And uh, we are here to listen. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I have two more uh, questions. If you maybe, we'll see if it covers you for this question. Once Greek, uh, Greeks leave Greece and become a resident of another country, they need to start filling taxation as non-residents. There is only one resident tax office in Athens, and the process uh, is now, now uh, nowhere near friendly, uh, friendly for uh, someone who is not in Greece. Uh, it's also a suggestion. From a process uh, perspective, the consulate should have a taxation office where citizens can actually present documents in order to move into the non-resident status for ta a taxation perspective. Well, uh, this is, um, we started this year uh, to visit our uh, our fellow Greeks abroad. We started with Australia. Uh, I, I, I was there at the end of the September, September and uh, I, I met with the Greek community there in order to see how to help them. Um, I think it's even more important here in the States. We, we got the numbers a little bit. We have more than 100,000 uh, taxpayers registered with us. Uh, out of which 87,000 are U.S. citizens, 100,000, 140,000 taxpayers that are uh, U.S. residents and have some kind of a tax obligation in, in Greece. 80,000, uh, 80,000, 87,000 are U.S. citizens, 51,000 are Greek citizens, 
Um, they have a property, real estate property that exceeds 7 billion euro. They've paid something like 75 million euros of taxes this year. So this means that there are people that we need to uh, help. And there is a series of actions that we're going to uh, go through next year. Uh, our website, we're working on having by summer a full English version of our website along with uh, information that is going to be necessary, you know, s simple things and simple questions. Uh, what, is, what is the tax obligation? I have a real estate, uh, you know, in Greece. I'm gonna, I have inherited something in Greece. How do I pay my taxes in Greece? So that, you know, we give all this information and uh, 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 simplify things. And of course, make the best use of digitalization. It's not an issue of having one or more uh, tax offices for residents abroad. By the way, we, we also changed that a few days ago, actually a few weeks ago. We issued a decision you, uh, you know, uh, for a uh, foreign resident. Taxpayers can get a tax identification number now at any tax office. And uh, there's going to be a step of, uh, there are going to be steps of, uh, uh, assistance to our taxpayers. To give another example, uh, by the end of April, uh, taxes will be able to be paid by foreign cards. It was not a possibility. It's not a possibility now, but it's going to be uh, accomplished by by April to 2023. Instant payments via any any kind of uh, uh, debit or credit or prepaid uh, card, Mastercard or Visa. So another step in facilitating. Payments. Okay. Now let's go to property. Buying a property in Greece as a non-resident should be simplified and take into account the fact that the actual buyers may not be able to be present. We want non-resident to go back and invest, but uh, how are we addressing the fact that they, they do not live there anymore, but in most cases just uh, visit for two weeks a year, two or three. Um, I, I mentioned that uh, in what I've initially uh, said uh, through the my property platform that we developed uh, real estate transfer taxes can now be paid digitally the whole process of filing is now uh, digital and uh, along that comes also payment of tax instantly so transfer of any kind can be has become very easy now with what is what was related to uh, the tax office I cannot give answers on other procedures of course that of course that are not uh, tax procedures we are also working now in simplifying the tax clearance that is needed for real estate transfer tax so I would say that by uh, uh, by, by the end of spring 2023, you're going to be uh, seeing a whole new picture when, when it comes to real estate uh, transfer tax. That's what we're striving for, and I think we're pretty close to achieving that. Okay. Thank you. Now you have the opportunity to make your own questions. I think we have to hear it first. Please, Mrs. Plerino Piper. Um, organized a, a very important uh, webinar where we presented on uh, the executive board and uh, not um, We presented the new laws where the pensioners to go back to Greece now uh, live there and they only pay 70% of the foreign income. For people who have lived more than five years in the United States, now when they have income from the United States for those five years to go back and start working in Greece again with uh, all the dollar benefits and for the federal offices. Um, we had a lot of questions and uh, during our webinar we had uh, people who had accountants and, uh, who would advise uh, people from the United States. We had um, 
we had um, um, Greek um, um, uh, accounting firms uh, who specialized in to give us answers, but the questions were a lot and specific, and um, it would be very interesting to know, in addition to all these answers that you have in the platform, is there a, an office where we can direct these questions, the specific questions, so that people can get a, a, their answers that they're looking for? Is there somebody they can talk to? Uh, what I can suggest, uh, because we're actually preparing a guide for these schemes now, there are three schemes. It's the uh, pensioner scheme, the worker scheme, and the investor scheme. Uh, worker scheme, by the way, seems to be doing pretty well. We have more than 3,000 applications for that. Uh, in a nutshell, you know, non-residents that, previously non-Greek residents that decide to come to Greece and work from Greece. Uh, they have 50% uh, uh, reduction in their, in their taxes. Uh, so uh, we're working on having a manual by the beginning of January. It would be interesting to gather your questions so that we build them in the manual and uh, we will uh, then s see how to channel the, the rest of the questions uh, to a service that, uh, that could give answers. Uh, we're happy, I will be happy to discuss yeah, the details of that. To the accounting firms in uh, in Greece, and of course they charge for it, you know. Okay, and that's I, what I, we did. You know, we send them. No, no, to I, them. I I understand that. Uh, th that's why we're actually trying to. We're in the phase of uh, creating a comprehensive manual on that, and the questions that you have gathered are of use in building them into the manual. You know, it's. I think it's. Uh, we will both provide the best service if. The answers are already there instead of you know everyone asking questions that you know there's a guide there you can see right but 95 percent so let's let's see what these questions are and uh, uh, okay and one more question um, the uh, is it better for American people to invest in Greece as individuals tax wise or through a company that's that's tax, a tax, tax wise like that's a what's tax the consultant taxation? question. What's the taxation for an individual to pay? <laughs> Why? Uh, what is the tax in a corporate, uh, on a corporation? And what is it on, on an individual? And if a corporation gives dividends, then what do the individuals pay? I mean, that's a taxation. I can, I can answer this. <laughs> Me. <laughs> it's more profitable to invest as a company because you also go to the development law and you have also intensive. As a, as a, as a person, uh, you don't have some intensive, I believe, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but from taxation purposes. I'm asking what is the tax rate for individual at this point and what is it for a corporation? Uh, okay. Uh, Again, I, I think it's a tax consultant question that you're asking. Uh, individuals have a tax bracket, you know, proportional tax. Uh, corporations have a flat rate of 24%, but it's more complicated than that. It, the, the, the questions you're asking is cannot be answered just by the tax rate. There's so many other things that one needs to take into account and. I can tell you that in my previous capacity as tax consultant, it's not just the tax rate. Uh, anyway, uh, these are questions that generally uh, we want to include in you know, digital manuals that we want to create for the Greek diaspora here, the people that should know, I mean, you know, the, the, the basics of taxation and where to find uh, more information. We are we are very, we're working very intensively in building these manuals. And actually, the the questions that we got from you today, fortunately, it was today that we got them. Uh, Nineteen questions uh, are 
we're going to take them into account in building these manuals. And I think one of the most important things that came out of today's uh, meeting for us is uh, my discussion with the General Consulate here uh, on how to make the General Consulate an intermediate to the questions that the Greek community here may have so that we have, you know, you, you address the questions, the tax questions to the, to the, cons the general consulate and these, these are channeled to us. It has worked with, uh, with Sydney. Uh, really it was very, very fruitful because we met with the Greek diaspora there and we asked them to, to send us their recommendations and their concerns and their questions one month after uh, very structured uh, uh, structured proposals uh, came and uh, we are working on accomplishing that so we, we can do the same work here with the general consulate and uh, have your questions and your needs and we will you know uh, uh, we, we will address that it's very important for us that uh, tax information is simple and easy to reach for uh, for investors, but also for uh, uh, Greeks living in the United States. You clearly haven't spent any time with Greek consulate in New York <laughs> as a, a regular person coming in and asking for, for assistance. Uh, no, I met with the general consul today. <laughs> oh, no, you met with the general consul, huh? but as, as a Greek citizen coming to the Greek consul to get anything done, and you can ask anybody who's been there, it is not the most pleasurable experience in the world. Well, well Do you want me to comment on that? No. No, no, no. 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 I have something I can't talk about. As foreign citizens, Greek, Greek citizens, Greek citizens living abroad, we want to invest in Greece in developing our property. And for some reason, the Greek government is, is passing a new law where ex post move, you have to go from four Saramatas to build to seven. What logic and what reasoning was behind a decision like that where we bring real tax revenues? by having improved property values all over the, the islands of Greece and mainland of Greece, they, they increase the, the lot size, so you can't, so you're basically stopping most Greeks from, from overseas building. You had Skrekas, you had your Yadis, and you asked me about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a tax thing. I want to your no, 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 it's, 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 I know what you want to do, but this is not a tax question. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a question of uh, development. I don't know the answer to the question. Uh, I mean, uh, it would be responsible to answer why it has increased because it's not a tax thing. I mean, it's, 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 uh, yes, but it's, it's not, it, it's, it's not a taxation decree. It has to do with, uh, you know, urban development and so. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. Sir. First, I'd like to thank you for accepting credit cards for in the future for for us to be able to pay our taxes because a lot of us. We're cannot, doing the evident. Yes, a lot of us cannot have bank accounts, and uh, it's been very difficult to pay our taxes in Greece. Um, I think you're going to be enthusiastic about yes, it when we do it because I'm, it's an instant payment. You're yeah. going to see the payment directly. Yes, which is very good. Um, on another subject, um, a lot of us in the U.S. use LLCs to invest. And a lot of us also have trusts where we, we do investments through. And I know in Greece, uh, Greece is working on, um, and I, I know the treatment of the LLC. The LLC is a corporation that basically doesn't pay taxes. The individual pays taxes, the member of the LLC. Uh, and I know Greece doesn't, when you invest in Greece through an LLC, you know the, the treaty doesn't work clearly. So they, they're, they're saying that the government is working on, on on, on fixing that, so that way, if an LLC can be treated as a, an individual. Uh, and the same thing with the trust. The trust, uh, I, I heard that the government's working on recognizing the trust as an entity. Um, and I wanted to ask where, where we are on that, on those two issues. Um, I, I suggest that you send us, you know, more concrete question on, on what you want to know and we will get back to you very sh as soon as possible on that. It's a very technical uh, 
okay, so, uh, so question. Where, where and do we send it to, through, through which? I will give you the, uh, uh, you. the, the email that of, of, our, uh, of my office. You can send it and uh, we'll be in touch so that you get the answer as soon as possible. Thank you. The lady there. I want to thank you for mm -hmm. explaining the flyers. We're all very passionate about figuring out solutions. One very practical concern is communication. Going to the consulate sounds like a good idea, but it can be incredibly challenging, and sometimes people don't live near consulates, and the website is wonderful. I really applaud the work that's gone into it but it's still not quite user friendly. Is there also a plan to proactively communicate from your, your department to the diaspora in a more consistent way, electronically, especially once we've registered and you have all our profile information? Maybe I was misunderstood. Um, what I said about the consulate is that you know, through the, the organizations of Greeks here, we gather the issues that concern the community, not having the, the consulate as an intermediate for individual affairs. It's, it's uh, having the community tell us what they need through the consulate, so the consulate gathers the, the various uh, needs so that we develop the solutions that you need each one of you individually. That's, that was the idea. Uh, we, we are planning on creating a Greeks abroad section on our website, also in English. That's what I said about uh, making an English version of it. We have the time difference, so communication on the phone is not, not so easy, especially you know, when it's 7 o'clock here and it's two o'clock in the afternoon in, in Greece. So the over the phone thing is, is, is not so easy generally. Uh, so w we will need to see how to help you in the best way possible. And there are solutions that are being developed like chatbots, digital assistants. We are also working on, on a taxpayer application for mobiles that, you know, uh, will help you have instant access to your tax accounts and obligations. Uh, and we, we, we will gradually, you know, beef this up so that we can, uh, we can, we can help you. Uh, this is why I said that we need the console so that we can channel the efforts to, you know, to what is most needed, prioritize the areas of intervention. This, it's, it's not gonna happen with the magic wand, you know, it's gonna take some time, but we're here to, to listen to your problems and to, to the issues that concern you and start building on that. Um, the, the first step is you know, having a Greeks abroad section in English with the basic uh, issues that are of concern to you, that are the tax issues, and then we will build on that. Yes, someone else? No. Okay. Do, uh, do you want to say to I want to say, yeah, yeah, some good news. Um, I guess m m m many Greeks, you know, living here, have their cars in uh, uh, in their home country. They've brought a car with you know uh, U.S. plates and everything, and they have the right to circulate the car, uh, use the car up to six months, and then they have to call the customs officer that to seal the car and then unseal it in the summer tradition, right? So uh, as, as much as is as colorful this tradition is, we want to abolish that. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, because it's actually funny to, you know, having to send a customs officer, take the boat to come to Carpathos, for example, and seal and unseal the car. So in, in, the, in, the, in the law that's gonna 
pass in a few days if it's not already passed. Um, we, we're going to digitalize this process. First step is through email, so declaration by the car owner that he's going to move and move the car and everything. And then we're going to make it digital through the, the platform that we already have for uh, car owners in Greece. So, yeah, I, I guess this is good news for some of you. Okay, if we don't have uh, if uh, we don't have someone else, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vitsilis. Good night.